Welcome back to another episode of the Creekside Podcast. Tune in each week with Drew and James to hear a relevant conversation about a biblical topic. Thanks for joining. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm James. And I am Drew. <laughs> it's good to be here today. I was about to lie and say a different name. Well, I'm glad you didn't. I, me too. Because today we're going to be talking about the Ten Commandments, one of which we it's were the about Ninth to, Commandment. The Ninth. <laughs> but today we're on the Eighth, right? No, we're on the ninth. Are we on the ninth yes. already? You don't even know. Look, I have them right behind my head. If you're watching on YouTube, we have the stones on the bookshelf. They're behind my head. Yes. These are not the originals, though. They're not the originals, no. no. But they are all ten and commandments. Uh, yes. So we've got that going for us. So, um, <laughs> the right. ninth commandment follows after the eighth commandment. So it the eighth does. commandment was, thou shalt not steal, or you shall not steal. I, I'm so used to the, the Ten Commandments are so often right. codified in that King James, thou shalt not, thou shalt uh, not. which sounds very uh, judicial, yeah. you know, and I, I like that because uh, they are commandments. They but, are. Um, a modernized translation would say something like, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. And so we have a, uh, what seems like, a pretty straightforward command, but I this one is this one is really uh, complex in the way that it is played out. Um, we often reduce this command to "don't lie," you know. Um, yeah. Hey, what what should what does this command mean? It means "don't lie," and that's part of it, but that's not the whole command. If you notice, it says, "You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor," and so. What is in view here specifically is telling the truth when it comes to a legal matter, when it comes to a matter of like of witnessing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, in the Bible, you know, you can't be convicted of a crime on unless it's on the basis of two or three witnesses, unless two or three people are there to corroborate the story, you know, and say, "Hey, I saw James, you know, do donuts in the church parking lot," and <laughs> you know, two other people have to see them. Uh, whether or not I'm in the car with him doesn't matter, you know. Uh, so uh, the, the other people have to see it and be able to testify. Yes, we did see this happen. That's how you make sure that there's um, certainty in that. And we apply. It's it's interesting to know we apply that same kind of thing to uh, the court of law today. You know, by yeah. by and large, there there are witnesses that are called whenever there's a crime that's committed, so that we make sure we're not just um, basing our um, our decisions on conjecture or on the opinion of one particular person. But the, the, it, the issue in question here is whenever you're called up to testify or to give a witness about some matter that you are truthful in that matter, that you don't, um, that you don't deceive the people asking the question, that you're honest and forthright about it. So I've got a, um, I've got a great book here, a great resource. This is one, um, if you're looking online um, or looking on YouTube, um, it's a huge book. Um, it's by Professor John Frame. Uh, he teaches at a Reformed Theological Seminary, Seminary in Orlando, uh, at least at the time of recording, that's where he taught. Um, and it's called The Doctrine of the Christian Life. And this is a essentially a, a ethical commentary on the Ten Commandments in which he addresses the Ten Commandments and then goes into detail into all of the ways in which that commandment might be played out into um, into the Christian life. And so um, he, he draws on the fact that this is about legal testimony, and this is about witness. And he's got this paragraph in here I want to read. Um, he says, Witness is not only what we say, but what we are and do. I recall years ago preparing a message for young people, urging them to witness to non-Christians concerning their faith. I search diligently through concordances trying to find passages in which God commands believers to witness, and I couldn't find any. Hmm. Scripture does not does command us to preach, teach, proclaim, and so on, but not to witness. The reason, I think, is that as in various texts, God has already made us witnesses. We have no choice in the matter. He does not command us to be witnesses because we already are. We can witness truly or falsely, but we cannot avoid witnessing, and I love that um, because there's there's a sense in which this it's not this is not just about what you say whenever you are asked a question, but this is about who you are prior to the question even being asked. Mm-hmm. Are you a truthful person? Do you do you seek to um, to convey and to give the truth to other people? Do you avoid 
hasty generalizations about people based upon evidence that's not entirely um, not entirely true. Just because you had a bad interaction with someone doesn't mean that they're they're automatically a terrible and nasty person. Right. You know, I want to get to the bottom of that. I want to understand maybe, hey, I didn't have a good interaction with that person, but um, they might be a fine person. It might have been a bad day. It might have been I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. there, there's all kinds of reasons there. But are we are we quick to assume the worst in other people, or do we really try to defend and to protect the truth? Um, and so this idea of witnessing is a is a constant one. Like we are always witnessing. It's yeah. a matter of whether our witness is a true one or a false one. You got any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that uh, you know when you come to the term witness, there's always uh, perceptions sure. and different viewpoints. Um, and so, I think when we, if you try to just bring this down to "thou shalt not lie," um, I, I think that's uh, too general. Whereas this was very specific, talking yeah. about being a witness um, and and how what your viewpoint is and how you give that to right. the so other person. I want to talk about lying, but before I do that, I want to talk about the difference between witnessing and evangelism mm. because I think those are two different things. And we can often conflate the two and to say we want to be good witnesses for Christ. What that means is we want to live in such a way and to act in such a right. way and to walk in such a way as to give God the glory for our lives. So we obey the Ten Commandments. You know, we worship God and worship only. We keep the Sabbath holy. We honor our father and mother. We don't murder. We don't, we don't steal. And we don't lie about things. Um, those, those, are, those are external kind of qualities that someone might look at us and see, okay, that individual looks like, looks differently than other mm-hmm. people. However, if all I ever do is live in a certain way, that is actually not evangelizing. No. Okay, so like I can meet a really nice person at Publix, and I do a lot because Publix is a pretty nice place. You know, the people who work there are pretty nice. They're pretty helpful. Um, they might be really nice to me, and they might help me out uh, while I'm there at the store. Um, and then I leave, and I go home, and I get in my car, and nothing about the gospel has been communicated. True. Nothing about Christ's death or burial and resurrection or my own sin or my faith in Christ or repentance has been communicated at all. You know, the person I had a really nice interaction with at Publix that told me the truth. Like a couple, last week, I was buying some two liters. We were having some people come over to the house, uh, and so I was buying some drinks. So I was buying some two liters, and the, this lady came over and saw me and said, Hey, you know, those are buy two, get two. And I'd only had two. And so I went and got two more, and she gave them to me for free. You know, like that was really nice of her. That lady was being a a good witness in a sense, and that she was doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. Quote, if you're listening, you can't see my air quotes here with my fingers. <laughs> um, she was being a quote unquote good witness, but that that's not evangelism, not, yeah. right? Um, evangelism is telling people the truth about Jesus Christ. Um, so bearing a true witness is living truthfully, telling the truth, but it's telling directly the truth about Jesus so that someone might hear the truth about Jesus and be converted. There's this, um, I, I remember when I was growing up, um, there, there was a guy uh, who worked at the church uh, where I attended, and he had a plaque on his wall, and it was a quote by St. Francis of Assisi, and it said, and he was the music guy, and so it said, preach the gospel always when necessary, use words. Okay, and so there's this sense in which, oh, I, I get what he was saying, like he's right. a musician, and so like... Mm-hmm. There's something beautiful about music that adorns the gospel, and that's true. Like I love music. I know you're a musician as well. Like right. we we love musical representations of the truth, and yet it is necessary for you to use words to communicate the gospel. Right. Like, and I I don't know if that quote is attributed to Saint Francis or if he gets dragged through the mud because of it. Either way, <laughs> it's not a it's not a true statement. Right. right, it's necessary to that we use our words in order to preach the gospel or to teach the gospel. Um, that's what Jesus has said um, that we are to do. We're to go and to make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey all that He has commanded us. That's the Great Commission. Um, that's what disciples are called to do: um, to to love one another, to teach one another, to share the good news about Jesus. What do you see in the Book of Acts? You don't see people going out on the street and going doing good deeds and hoping that someone somewhere will learn about Jesus. No, right. you see them going into the synagogues and teaching and preaching boldly and, and, and declaring that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and how that shouldn't change everybody's eternity. That should change everybody's life and their trajectory. Um, 
we we don't want to conflate witnessing with evangelism. We want to always tell the truth, and we want to always tell the truth about Jesus. But there's a difference between telling the truth and sharing the gospel. Yeah. And I want to make that really clear. Does that does Absolutely. that distinction make sense to you? Yeah, yeah. I think the witness is your lifestyle, but the evangelism is what you preach and what that's, you teach. That's exactly right. And you've got to be clear. I mean, you've got to talk about Jesus if you want people to know him. Uh, right. You know, you can't... Yes, you, you, should live in a, you should live a kind of life that is consistent Absolutely. with the gospel, um, but you can't, quote-unquote, live the gospel, right? The gospel is a message of what Christ has done, and so you you can't live the gospel. And so I, and I often hear people say, um, you know, you don't want to, I don't want to hurt your witness. And I, mm-hmm. I get what they're saying about that, um, that you don't want to act like a fool in public and then show up to church on Sunday and people to say like, there's, there's mm-hmm. not really consistency in your, in your living here. Um, but at the same time, want to notice like, there's a difference between our witness and witnessing about Christ. Like if my goal for my witness to you is not that you think I'm a really good person. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm my witness to you is not hey look how good I am. My witness to you is hey look how good Christ is. That's right. Now I want to adorn the gospel by the way in which I live, but I, the only thing that, you know, I can I can hurt my witness or harm my witness in a sense by living um, in a way that's in, incorrect with the scripture. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I'm sharing the truth about the gospel, um, there's no guarantee that person is going to respond. I'm I'm told what I am to declare and to proclaim that Christ is risen from the dead, that he died for sinners on the cross. There's no guarantee I can make someone believe that. And there's no guarantee that my lifestyle is going to uh, elicit some kind of response from that individual. It's just, you know, just because I obey the rules of the Bible and then share the gospel with someone doesn't make my proclamation of the gospel any more powerful than uh, someone who has you know not been a Christian as long or isn't as you know disciplined in their faith or whatever else it might be you know and so just yeah. just trying to make the distinction uh, make the distinction there we are to we are to tell the truth we are to live in such a way uh, that makes much of Jesus but when I'm bearing witness to Jesus I want to get out of the way yeah. you know and, it, and in a real sense our our being a witness is us trying to get out of the way not so that people would look at us and say wow what a great person or individual that guy is. He does all of these things, rather to say, wow, what a great Savior Jesus is. Yeah. Does that makes sense? It does. And I have a question for you. So looking at the word witness in this sense, uh, yeah. so we had the legal term of witness right. against someone that you, the what you've seen, right? Mm-hmm. And then you have the witness where you have uh, your lifestyle. Yeah. So with this commandment, to not fair, not to bear false witness against your neighbor. Are we talking about? It could be either or or both. I want you to tell me. Is it that we're not saying that our neighbor uh, did something they didn't do, or vice right. versa, uh, false witness? Or is it I'm living a lie in front of this person to fit in or to yeah. to bring about more popularity of myself? Or and I think I think it's both. Mm-hmm. I think it's first and foremost the legal setting, mm-hmm. um, but I think the legal setting is upheld by the way that you live in a non-legal setting. So, like for example, if you're, you know, if you live a lifestyle that is dishonest, and then you're called to the stand mm. and you tell the truth, it's like the boy who cried wolf. Like, yeah. why should we believe the boy who cried wolf? Exactly. You know, uh, and so I think it's both of those things. You need to live truthfully and you need to speak truthfully. And if you live truthfully, the fact that you speak truthfully um, will will be um, more believable. You uh, know, yeah. uh, if that makes sense. So yeah. I think it's I think it's both of those things that comes to the that comes to the the idea of lying, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, Christians are to tell the truth. We are to let our yes to be yes and our no to be no. Um, but we were just even talking before we hopped on the hopped on the microphone here um, about like even just pleasantries that right. we might give. And Frame makes this point in the book. Um, you know, if I uh, if we've been hanging out for a while and maybe it hasn't been like the greatest time together, and I say, "Hey, man, it's been great to see you," and I know that I really don't believe that in my heart. You know, <laughs> have I borne false witness? Am I lying? Or right. uh, you know, does this um, does this make me look good? You know, do you mm-hmm. like this shirt on me? Should I always say no? That shirt's ugly. You know, because I want to be I don't I want to be honest. You know, I don't right. want to bear false witness. Or um, is is it okay to say well? 
yeah, that shirt's fine, you know, right? Um, something like that. Um, and and so the the idea there, we, we want to be really careful here um, that we don't draw lines too sharply because if you're if you always speak your mind, <laughs> you're not yeah. going to have any friends, right? right? That's that's the bottom line. Uh, if if every day, you know, James will come in a lot of times. We do our staff meetings on Tuesday, and he'll say, "How's it going, man?" And if every time, like, I'm terrible, you know, <laughs> like I'm an awful, terrible, horrible <laughs> sinner, and here's all the things I've done wrong today, right? And then I can say, "Well, I just want to be, I want to be." honest you know right. i don't want to be i don't want to be deceitful um oftentimes james will ask me how are things going and i'll say they're generally pretty good you know right. or i'm doing okay normally i'll make some snarky remark you know uh, like <laughs> how did course. you get in here who let you in um <laughs> but whenever we whenever we think about these things you know we we want to be careful um that we apply this that we have a a characteristic of truthfulness um but at the same time that there are there are things that we can speak about generally mm -hmm. um, that don't necessarily mean we have to volunteer every bit of information that we have about a particular topic. Okay, yeah. so um, I I do this thing. I like doing this. I don't know if my wife likes doing this or not. <laughs> likes that I do this or not. But I love telling my wife like every single thing I did during the day. So like yeah. I woke up at six o'clock and then like at six o seven I went and let the dogs out and then like I made coffee and I drank this many cups and like I'll go I'll be super specific. About about it and sometimes she's like okay please stop like i don't need to know all this information how was your day good or bad you know like right. that, that'll be enough and so uh, we want to be honest but we don't want to we don't want to be so honest that we betray information yeah. that doesn't necessarily need to be shared and so there's a there's a measure of wisdom and discernment that needs to be uh, brought into this conversation that um there are times where you can withhold the truth and it is lying because you haven't told the entire truth. Mm -hmm. Like someone's asked you the truth about something, and there's a situation where the whole truth needs to be told, and you haven't told it. And sometimes it can be wisdom because you're not entirely sure of a particular situation. Yeah. Um, you know, so imagine that um, somebody shows up at church on a Sunday morning, um, and uh, let's just make this super hypothetical, you know, let's just, uh, and uh, you know, imagine there's a guy named John and you had, you had lunch with John last week and you asked John, Hey, how's it going? And he said, you know, me and my wife are really having some difficulties in our marriage. And then, um, John shows up at church on Sunday. All right. And he shows up by himself and his wife's not with him. All right. There can be a million reasons why John's wife is not with him. Mm -hmm. You know, she could be out of town visiting family. She could be sick at home. She could, you know, whatever it might be. Um, there could be all kinds of reasons why she's not there. But then someone comes up to you afterwards and says, hey, I noticed that John was here alone. Um, where was his wife? What am I to say? Am I bearing false witness if I simply say, I don't know? Mm -hmm. um, do I have to volunteer every bit of information? I'm going to say, no, you definitely don't. Right. Um, you could say, where is John's wife? Oh, she wasn't here today, you know? And there could be a million reasons. It could be their marital problems that he's right. disclosed to me, but I don't have any kind of clue. Um, we're not being, you're not being dishonest right. um, by, by, by saying less than the full extent of what you know in right. that kind of context. And this can get really tricky, right? Uh, and we, we want to be careful. But I want us to see that we can, if we're not careful, in the sake of quote-unquote telling the truth, Mm -hmm. easily step into gossip yes and that's something to that's something to guard against here that just as much as we don't want to bear false witness we also don't want to bear so much witness about things we're not certain about that we become gossips right. and then someone says hey i i'm just trying to tell the truth or i'm just trying to share prayer requests well no gossip is like a ton of fun um you know and i mean that in the worst way possible like it's a lot of fun to sit around and talk about people uh, that aren't there you know, and talk about people and talk about things that they do and, and to make fun of people. Like, there's a there's a part of people that really enjoys it. And I don't say that like, hey, we should go and gossip as if I'm making mm -hmm. a joke. But there's a part of gossip that's really fun and enjoyable. I remember when I was in college, um, I had been I had been studying this, and I, we had a, I had a group of friends that we would go to Waffle House together um, on Friday nights, like, super late. And we would walk into Waffle House, and it was a ton of fun. You know, we were, we were in college, and we'd eat waffles and sit there and talk. And I remember this one particular night, we were talking bad about some people that we knew and like we were gossiping and in the middle of it i was just super convicted of it and i was like why are we sitting here talking about people and talking disrespectfully about people who aren't here yeah. you know we we need to be mindful of our conversation this is this is not honoring like this is not a good thing to do it's not honoring to them or honoring to the lord but we weren't saying anything that was untrue yeah. you know we were saying things that were all true yeah. um so we we want to be we want to be careful about our speech that we yes there are times where we can speak in ways that are very honest, 
but are also very damaging to people. And we want to speak truthfully about things um, without being damaging or without being harmful or hurtful to people. And a lot of times, there's just a lot of information that's none of my business, yeah. and I need to be I need to be okay not knowing that, and I need to be I need to be a trustworthy individual that just because something is shared with me doesn't mean that I have the right to share mm-hmm. that with other people, um, even if that person asked me not to share it. You know, right. I need to be trustworthy enough to hold um, information and confidence. You got any thoughts or responses to that? Yeah, no, I think that this commandment has a lot of uh, encompassing <laughs> meanings. I think that the core of it would be just be truthful. obviously you know um but i think that it's it's a pretty broad commandment uh and can be taken in different situations differently Uh, yeah and not and not to say that it's sometimes true and it's sometimes not right it's 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 always true we should always bear um we should always bear truthful witness we should uh never seek to bear false witness but circumstantially there are different ways in which this commandment is implied that we don't always have to say everything that we always that we know about any given particular topic. Right. There are times where we do have to. Yeah. Um, there are times where it, it is right for us to say that if we're trying to deceive someone into believing something that's not the truth, right. um, we're trying to warn someone for something that is the truth. But at the same time, there are also times where we we don't have to give every right. every bit of conceivable information. All right. So um, the Catechism here says, "What's required in the ninth commandment? Um, that I bear false witness against no one." that I rest no one's words, I not be a backbiter or slanderer, nor join in condemning no one unheard and rashly, but that I avoid on pain of God's heavy wrath, hear that, uh, that I avoid all lying and deceit and being the proper works of the devil, oh, as being the proper works of the devil, that's the devil's a liar and a deceiver, and in matters of judgment and justice and in all other affairs, love, honestly speak, and confess the truth, and so far as I can, defend and promote my neighbor's good name. And that's a good way to think about it. Your love for your neighbor. You want to defend your neighbor's good name, and you want to promote your neighbor's good name as much as you can. Mm-hmm. And so you don't want to be dishonest in commending your neighbor if he's not commendable, but right. neither do you have to say, oh, he's a snake. Right. Know? Oh, I, I wish he wasn't my neighbor. He's a terrible person or something like that. Um, so that that's kind of all wrapped up there in the, in the command against bearing false witness. Yeah. Awesome. Any final thoughts? I think that we've, we've dove really deep into this and it's been helpful. I know for me, so I'm sure it's helpful for everyone. Yeah. Jesus says to let your yes be yes and let your no be no. And so we don't want to be, um, we don't want to be people who are untruthful or a character or are characterized by not telling the truth, but we also need to be, be mindful, um, that truth telling, "Quote unquote." I mean, there, that's that's a popular thing in in, in our culture. Truth telling being controversial for the sake of being controversial. Yeah. Um, we don't want to be controversial just because we're controversial. There are some things that need to be warned against, um, and there are some things that are none of our business. Yeah. And it takes it takes wisdom to kind of know the difference and uh, and to just uh, operate wisely in that. And so, and this is where again, where I think. Um, all of this is to be applied in the church, but it's so helpful to be a part of a church filled with wise people um, to to be able to to ask these kinds of questions about certain situations and say, is this is this the kind of situation where more information needs to be shared or not? And and mm-hmm. protecting people's um, protecting the fragile na- nature of people's um, confession or of people's sins against you. I mean, just because you acted like a jerk to me on a Sunday, you know, or said something to me throughout the week and we had to have a reconciliation doesn't mean that you're a jerk to all the other people in the church. Doesn't mean I need to go about, Hey, let me warn you all that Jake is, or James is a snake. (laughs) Jake is a snake is what I was trying to say. (laughs) (laughs) That James is a snames, (laughs) you know, that, uh, (laughs) Let's try to rhyme it. Uh, let me say that you know uh, the James is a terrible, terrible guy. I have to, I have to tell the truth, you know, because right. James did this to me. Yeah. No, that's not actually. Wise. I'm terrible that's, to you because you called me Jake. Because I called you Jake, <laughs> Jake from State Farm. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, so we we think about this. Um, we want to be careful, and we want to be we want to be disciplined in the way that we um, evaluate what kinds of things we share, what kinds of truths we tell. Um, Because we can be honest without being inflammatory and without being accusatory, and that's what we should pursue as Christians. Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, this is wonderful. I think we've got one more to go. One more. One more to go, because there's ten, and they are commandments. Yes. Jake is telling the truth (laughs) here. All right, guys. Next time I'm going to say, this is Jake, and this is Drew. (laughs) 
<laughs> right? <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna don't bear false witness. Don't, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, no, so I'm right. not Jake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun. Uh, it's been educational. I've had a good time. What I more could you I, want? Really exactly. fun, educational. This is like, yeah. this is what we're. <laughs> it can't get any better than yeah. this. So no, I hope you guys enjoy listening, and watching on YouTube. If you are. Um, feel free. You can always email us if you have any questions. That email is info at creeksidefellowshiptn.org. Org. Yes. yes. So um, our website is dot com. Our emails are dot org. And don't ask me why. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just the way that it is. That's the way it is. So. <laughs> All right, guys. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week, and we'll see you back here next week on the Creekside Podcast. <laughs>